Hi, everyone. Welcome back. We got a lot of action out there, man. The weekend was popping with information, the debt ceiling, TMF. We got all kinds of things. Liquidity. Who's been talking about liquidity for the last few weeks? And now you're going to see it all over the news. You can see other YouTubers talking about it now. Oh, boy, we were way ahead of that when liquidity is going to get drained out of the equity market. And yes, June should be a, an absolute terror for it. But we don't know yet, but the treasuries could give us an opportunity to make bank here within the next few quarters, and we're going to discuss that. Before we do, make sure you take advantage of the Moo Moo link down below. Put $100 in. Get yourself up to 10. Well, you're going to get 10 free stocks worth up to $2,000 apiece. And, of course, if you haven't done it, make sure you join the Weeble down below. We will get you up to 12 stocks for putting in a dollar or more deposit it could be worth up to 30,600 altogether. Take advantage of that. Then come on over and join me at the Patreon as well. And you can join our private discord. Plus you can see all the stocks and stuff. I'm going to be buying a lot of different things today and possibly selling some things. Yeah. I, people ask me, Hey, you've been awful bearish lately, Mo. You changing your mind? What's going on? No, not at all. If anything, especially with the debt ceiling we see it coming out i said is this going to be a sell the news event and i've talked about this i expected when we go ahead we get the answers from dc everybody seems to be happy and you have the news out there trying to get their clicks all of that stuff going on but at the end of the day it's going to be one of those well hey it's solved we don't have this fear uncertainty and doubt anymore the market should go through the roof and you know what's going to happen you're going to have a sell-off here probably by the end of the week. I wouldn't be surprised at all because the liquidity damage coming to the equity markets is going to be huge. And we're going to talk about that in this video. You're going to see what I'm talking about. We are saying in the next seven months, you're going to see over a trillion dollars worth of treasury sold. And that money comes from where? A good chunk of it's going to come out of equities because they're paying a high interest rate and the Fed's looking to go even higher. Folks, this is going to get ugly and I just don't think people are prepared for it. Now, we can take a look, see what happened in the markets last week. As you know, it was a great green day for the bulls. They were running, stampeding through. A, they were just breaking everything in sight and you continue to see that. But I have been dollar cost averaging into the into the SDAO. I have my SQQQ from the beginning. I'm going to hold that through June. I think up for most of June here because I think we're going to finally see that pain that I've been waiting for. Now, there's no guarantees. The NASDAQ, once again, in the pre-markets right now are doing their thing. But check it out. For May, uh, we go up to May 1st here. For May, we're seeing this down about 2 point something percent, which is good which is what we want. But if you see, it's 2.81 for the Dow Jones, which means SDAO, if we pull SDAO up for the month, is doing exactly what we'd want it to do. It's up 9.01%. It's exactly what we want, but we're not getting the same thing. I have SPXU as well <clears throat> for the month. It, uh, let's see where we get for that one. Not up. It's down about 2.54%. So with the Dow Jones S&P 500, if you were in those two, you made money over the last month. Here's where the damage comes. We get into the NASDAQ, 6.25, SQQQ, and you see the damage, 21% down. So depending on where you're a bear at, the Dow Jones has been the manufacturing. You see the leading economic indicators saying there's trouble. You make, you do well, you're doing well. The S&P 500, it's a month, you're down a little, uh, two point something percent. Not that bad, actually. It's the NASDAQ. And everybody wants to run into the tech plays. And we saw what happened. NVIDIA just lighting it up. A lot of the other ones lighting it up. Uh, what is it, seven or eight of them all together carrying the entire NASDAQ 100. And if you take them out, they're actually flattered down. And so that's the damage. And so now, does that go away? Do they start to take profits and move it into these risk-free treasuries now that the debt ceiling is solved? I don't know, but I'm gonna tell you this. I think it's gonna get ugly in June, I'm telling you. Um, <clears throat> like I said, May, if you're in the Dow, you're happy. If you're in the S&P, you're like, eh. And if you're in the Qs, oh boy, that was ugly. Uh, here you go, here's the pre-market, at least at the time of me making this video. The greed is getting back up there close once again, getting up there close to extreme greed. You can see what's going on. And extreme greed right now, comparing the S&P 500, it's 125-day moving average. We are way up. And so keep an eye on these things.
And of course, if you haven't checked out the put and call options, man, everybody, look at this thing. They are loading the boat on these call options. They think this is it, my friends. Things are getting crazy. And so a lot of greed out there. We'll keep an eye on it and we'll see where this thing goes. I just might have to, and I haven't done this in a long time. You guys let me know down below. Should I get into a few put options? I usually just do the triple leverage, but right now it is screaming that we have a lot of greed out there and this could be a sell the news event. Once they sign, once Biden signs this debt ceiling deal, we could see some things. I wanna straighten some people out too. I'm, I'm reading the news, I've been following all this. Obviously, if you've been subscribed to this channel, you know what's going on. I try to bring you the best stocks to buy now. I try to bring you a lot of good information and the timing's difficult, let's be honest. It's, it's difficult out there. But one of the things I've found is we talked about this student loan thing. And I told you when that comes back, it is going to absolutely crush the economy because a lot of people are already borrowing on their credit cards to record levels. Now with that money being borrowed and the interest rate going up from the Fed, they're continuing to rise, to raise it up about 25 basis points every meeting. It looks like they're probably gonna do it again. A lot of people are just barely meeting, they're barely being able to meet that minimum payment. We're seeing a lot of mispayments now in automobiles and credit cards. And it's back to pre-pandemic levels. But here's the difference. The student loans are not being paid. So if we're back to pre-pandemic levels of people missing payments and everything else without the student loans, what happens when the student loans come back? I'll tell you what happens. We don't get back to pre-pandemic. We're way worse than we were pre-pandemic. And that's gonna kick in. And so you have that. You have the liquidity coming out of the market, so you're gonna see a lot of the big retail names out there not getting as much business because now student loans are back. And that's millions of people, folks. I can't tell you, I think one of the things I read about that was it was like $300 billion that had been able to be spent in the markets and everything else in retail because of the student loans. Now that goes away. That's like a big stimulus check that's no longer there. And so that's gonna happen. Now you don't forget about this either. We have the Fed raising rates. It's now more likely than not that the Fed raises rates again. And personally, I think they probably should. I'm watching the data too. It's coming in hot. Unemployment keeps staying down there in the low threes. They know they have to get that up to about four and a half and it's gonna get ugly. And they need to make it ugly to break the back of inflation. All the experts, the economists out there who follow this are saying the same thing. They need to do more. It's just going to be so sticky around four. They need it to get down. The only way to do that is really break the back. And unfortunately, that means recession. And I think the Fed knows that. they got to continue to do it. It's ugly. But here's the thing. Well, how can I make a ton of cash? What stocks can I start to load up on to make bank? And here's the thing. You guys know one of the big things I'm in is the treasuries. These treasuries are where it's at. But pay attention to this right here. For those that are not following along, U.S. Treasury needs to issue approximate total of $1.1 trillion in Treasury bills in the second half of 2023. Folks, that means the next seven months, Not you're looking, it's going to be like six months and three-fourths to replenish the operating cash balance. But this is a lot of money, folks. This is a ton of Treasuries out there. So they're going to flood the market with Treasuries to raise their capital. Once they do that, uh, they're probably gonna it's gonna put a floor for how the treasuries respond and that's the bad news for everybody's waiting so once they get through this over the next two quarters and it doesn't mean that the treasuries can't do what we want because it's gonna be a lot of it's gonna be based on the Fed if the Fed starts to pause or pivot I am loading the boat that is when I find that you're gonna see a lot of good movement for those looking to get into the treasuries. Now you can get into TLT if you do not want a triple leverage like TMF 20 year. TLT is an ETF for just straight 20 year treasury. You can do that. Uh, but I gotta tell you, I'm gonna be going for the risk. And so we're still not there yet. We still, now the good news is some pressure should come away from the treasuries at least a little bit once they sign this 
this debt ceiling thing. Anytime we had that debt ceiling issues out there, everybody's fighting. You knew that was pressure. We saw everything on TMF drops. Anytime it gets solved, we should see a little bit of a rebound, but the flooding coming in from the government is going to absolutely be not good. And so pay attention to that. It's not done yet. And as you can see with TMF right now, uh, over the last year, you can see we've been going down ever since that debt ceiling. And you can see 20, almost 21% down. Are we getting back down to those lows where we can feel good again? I think we're getting close. I thought we'd get down about seven and a half, seven to seven and a, uh, seven to seven and a half. We got down to seven thirty-five, I think, last week. Let's see, or seven twenty-nine. So we did hit in the middle, like we expected. I thought that would be the low, but now with this one point one trillion plus a new, uh, most likely the Fed raising rates again, could be an ugly two three weeks here. So I'm still watching. I'm not loading the boat on that yet, but I am watching. And you can see, as people believe things are going to get better, it starts to pump up a little bit. I would expect that. We'll see maybe a little bit of a pump here in the short term once they sign that debt ceiling, but there's no guarantees out there. Folks, I am planning <clears throat> on buying some more inverse uh, shares out there. And so if you're wondering exactly what I'm going to buy, I'm telling you this, I'm still not going long yet with the big growth stocks, small caps, all that stuff. I am looking at some value plays as well as some inverse plays with that triple leverage because I think pain is on the way. The old pain train is going to take a stop in June and we'll find out. And if I'm wrong and this market absolutely crushes it through a, a liquidity crisis, through the, the Fed raising rates and all of this, wow. I don't even know what to say. I think the Dow continues down. I think the S&P is down by the end of June as well. And hopefully, we'll see if the Qs can bounce back for those bears out there with me on this. I'm just not sure, but there are value stocks to be buying for the long term in sectors that are down a ton this year. And I've been loading up on them over at the Patreon. You know what I'm talking about. Come on over. I'll bring them on. We'll be talking on the channel eventually about them here. So make sure you subscribe so when I, we talk about it, you'll see exactly what we're discussing. Now, folks, if you haven't done it, go ahead and get those free stocks from Moomoo and Weeble and then come on over to the Patreon or join down below as a channel member here on YouTube. I greatly appreciate it. Thanks for stopping by. Let's get out there and make some money.